Coming up. The dashboard takes a punch. This is in the way. Some cross threading. Cross threading in progress. When current BMW kidney grills hoove into view. And we party. Party! We are going to retrofit more stuff into this car. Rear power windows, power folding mirrors, and speakers. This car has a stereo system, which consists of four big speakers and two tweeters, and it sounds like crap. The donor car had uh, like a medium, well, like medium range speakers for the E46, which is hi-fi speakers. Comes with 10 speakers, subwoofers, and amplifier in the back. So I'm gonna put all of that into this car. I did briefly consider putting Harman Kardon in, but the problem with that, it's very expensive, about 300 euros, plus I need to get all of the wiring and stuff. And from what I read online, it's not worth it. And I already have this system for free from that car, so I'm just gonna chuck it in. And when it comes to the sound system, I'm not that picky. It just needs to sound nice and clean, a little bit of bass, and I'm happy. Also, I'm gonna put sound ending wherever I can in the back. Everything needs to come out. Spare wheel is coming out. <clears throat> So this here is going to get cleaned and then I'm going to slap sound ending all over the place. Now this junk can come out. Now I'm going to remove this plastic here. <laughs> yes. Oh, this comes out as well. Ooh. A bonus clamp. Norma, it's a good one. So again, I don't know what I'm doing. I might be unnecessarily adding weight, but at this point it can't hurt to try because this car is very noisy. Adding sound deadening to the floor didn't make a noticeable difference. To the doors it did a bit, but doing the trunk area made the most difference and the car was noticeably quieter in the rear. This, as you can see, was all beautifully done. And when I say that, just randomly slapped wherever I see space that it fits. Now I'm gonna remove all of this here. That's all expertly done as well. Filled in all of this here, 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 wherever I could. So everything here on the floor is the stuff that I pulled from the donor car and what I need to retrofit in my car. Power rear windows, power folding mirrors, he fi speakers, and don't worry, I'm not gonna use those. Those are blown, I have new ones. Self-leveling for the headlights and just a bunch of wiring in general. I think we're gonna start with the amplifier in the trunk, which is this thing here. And the bracketry for it. I had to buy this because it's different for the touring and for the sedan. All of that goes here. And now I need to remember how this goes. How does that go? All right, so let's put in the amplifier. That's the amp here, firmly in place. And now all of the wiring for the speakers needs to come here. For example, these wires here, on that speaker and that one over there needs to come here, as well from all of the doors. And then if memory serves me right, there are two wires that go from the amp all the way to the radio. And I think I'm gonna be able to reuse, well, these to be honest, that's what I was planning to do. Just to cut, snip these here. And that one over there possibly and then do kind of switcheroo over there so i don't have to run the wiring all over the car and just they're not going to be the same color as in the diagrams but it'll work so this here is the connector for the amplifier and where all of the speakers come and now i'm going to because i chopped it up from the donor car in order to remove it i am going to connect these speakers in the back real quickly snip this one here and then these two cables i'm probably going to reuse from the radio and run into the amplifier, then I don't have to run the wiring through the middle of the car. See, that's a genius idea. So I removed everything from this side, battery, washer bottle, and the insulation, and now I'm gonna slap sound ending over there. I noticed when, when I did it on this side, it actually made a lot of difference. I can tell that there's a less noise coming from this side of the car than from this one. So hopefully when I add more insulation here or sound deadening, it'll help keep the noise down. Finished slapping in sound deadening here as well. 
I covered the shock tower because that's where the majority noise comes from because there's nothing from the other side. And then here as well because that's just thin sheet metal. This I didn't do anything because that's where the battery lives and you don't want to put anything there. There's a drain plug over there and it looks good. There's no rust, so that's great. Replacement speakers for the blown ones. And question for the audio fellas, can these speakers go again? Because it would be a shame to throw them away if they are salvageable. And I know nothing about speakers, so share some wisdom in the comments. These are the old, old ones, just generic stereo speakers. And these are hi-fi, loud, bass, woofer speakers, so it's an upgrade. Plug it in. Good. Okay, before we start monkeying around with the wiring for the rear power windows, first I want to pop the glove box off and see what kind of GM5 module this car has. I'm 99.36% sure it has a low one, and this one is from the donor car. You can see how it says high. High one is required for the cars that have rear power windows, and typically cars that don't have the low one. That one over there is not going to work, so I'm gonna have to throw this one in and code it to the car. As that is the most annoying bit to me, I'm gonna start with that first. Oh, there's one wire here. That's just funny. Uh, the scaffolding is in the way. Yeah. Plastic fantastic. Do I push? How am I supposed to remove you then? Come on. I, are all BMW mechanics this flexible? What in the. Oh my god. What am I doing? What is happening? Uh, will you unclip now? Please unclip. Otherwise, I'm gonna throw you into the river. I'm stuck. Oh, no, I'm not. Uh, who knew that replacing this garbage is so difficult? Ah, there you go. Oh, there's nothing else holding you on. Let go. Yep, it's low. That was surprisingly difficult to remove. There's a lot of plastic clips and stuff, and I broke one. So we need to put this one in. So let's fire up the computer. So the stupid GM module lives here, and this scaffolding is right into the way of pulling this out. So I need to lower this plastic, and I broke one of the clips on top. Then I'm going to replace with one from the donor car because all of this needs to drop a bit and then I can slide out. What's that? I used NCS Expert to copy data of the car from the old module and then pasted them on the new module. Coded it to the car and enabled the option for the rear power windows. If you're interested in more in-depth coding with NCS Expert, I'll leave a link in the description. So now we're going to start retrofitting wiring for the rear power windows and speakers, which means removing the door panel for hundred and millionth time. I forgot how many times I removed door panels on this car it's ridiculous there's the screw we're going to start with the easy bit and that is replacing this plastic molding cover thingy the one for the power windows has a sensor built in here in the wiring diagram it's described as jamming protection don't know what it does i think something to do with sensing that the window is all the way up or whatever in any case, he has this plug here, so this one needs to be removed, and this one installed. What the? There it is. So, don't need that anymore. In goes the new one. That's it. It's fully in. Now we're going to remove the wiper barrier and remove wiring harness from this door and put the one for the rear power windows and speakers. Filet mignon. So here's the manual contraption and the wiring that we need to remove and put in the new one. And the connector is here and it's a bit tricky to get off, but we can do it. 10 mil nut. Wrong, it's eight. Just keep forgetting stuff, you know. All right, that's something. Yes, it is. So this goes in, comes out from the other side. Now that can go in. Plug there, unplug it, unplug it, yes. 
there it is this is the wiring for the speakers for the rear power windows and for the door lock so let's first plug in the door lock yep that's plugged in so that goes through here that's the wiring mostly in place door lock goes through here 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 then here we have the cable or the connector for the motor for the power windows and then goes through here and then through the door out and now i can start disassembling this here don't scratch anything please yep remove this thing ah and there's the connector. This connector here is from this car, as you can see. And this one here is from the donor car. And there are about five wires that we need to transfer to this connector in order to get the rear power windows to work. There are two thick wires for the rear power motor and three for the switches. Also, here comes the two wires for the speakers in the back. So I'm gonna start with the wiring for the power window. Remove the plastic cover. And there it is. So now I need to start transferring one by one starting with the big wires the blue red one pressing the pin comes out that goes there nice and firm that's pretty much everything transferred and we already have a ground on this connector so we don't have to run that i think the first wire that i want to run through the car is the one for the speaker because that's the easiest one it just goes through here to the back of the car let's get some zip ties there's our connector Like so. Oh, maybe I can do this. Yep. And that's the wiring for the rewrite speaker done. All this was professionally zip tied all the way to the connector. And now I can focus on running these wires here to the GM module, to the fuse panel, and all of that good stuff there. First, we are going to run these two wires. From the connector on the general module here one goes to the fuse 71 and then the ground cable goes to the ground post taking apart this fuse panel so many times as well come on yep there it is it's a good thing it's not cold outside and i don't have space to do this in my garage 71 is the last one this would have been so much easier with the dashboard out oh please go in Yes. No, nope, 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 nope. This is in the way. Finally, it's in place. All of my 12 fingers hurt. Ah, but that's in, that's the worst part by far. Here's the fuse number 71, right next to 70. And there's our wire right over there. And now we need to stick 30 amp fuse in it like that so for now i can put all of this back together and then i'll come back again for the power folding mirrors this connects to the pin 10 on the connector on the gm module so the reason i'm not making a schematics or a diagram it's because when i was removing everything from the donor car i just labeled all of the pins so i know exactly where what goes and the diagram for this is really big. So if you need one, I recommend looking up in the BMW TS manual. They have all of the diagrams for this. So the wire for the fuse panel, it's this one. It goes to the third plug on the GM module, the big one. And then three wires for the switch button or the door panel go to the first plug. So all of that is done. The color is a bit different because I had to cut some of the wires and I didn't manage to save all of the pins. So they're a bit different, but all of the wiring is properly done. And everything is run through the here, 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 here. And now I just need to connect this and then throw in the motor for the windows and see if it works. You probably can't see anything now, but that's fine. Neither can I. Yeah, no. That went in. Let's get the screw quickly before it changes its mind. Brozov, go in. That's the wiring done and connectors connected. So now I'm gonna put in the motor just temporarily. Press the button and see if it works. Here's the motor from the donor car. Let's plug it in. Let it hang. There's our button. Now I'm gonna reconnect the battery and hope the car doesn't go up in smoke. Now if I programmed the GM module properly, this should work. 
This is, this is good. Oh yeah, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now I need to remove all of this old stuff for the manual crank window. There it is. Don't need that anymore. It's probably my least favorite part of all of it, putting the stupid sand ending in. Brand new window regulator. I didn't want to use one from the donor car because it didn't look very good. And this isn't that expensive and it's not something that I want to do twice. So, new it is. Is this the left one or the right one? Motor mounted. And now this can go in. Maybe like that. Yep. There it is. Now I need to lower the window down slowly. So, moment of truth. Let's connect the motor. The button is already connected. And see what happens. Excellent. Down you go. Brilliant. Success, ladies and gents, success. The door panel will come later because I need to do some work on it. But for now, I can put the vapor barrier back and that's the wiring for the rear right side window, power, something. I forgot what I was going to say. Done. Now we're going to run wiring from this switch here to the GM module. In case you're wondering why I didn't do this when I had the carpets off, and that is a fair question. And the answer is rather simple. I need to be able to use the car and I can't do that if the carpets and seats are not in it. And all of this takes quite a long time, so that's why I'm doing it now. Oh, there we go. Currently, I have three wires, and we're gonna add two more. So now we're going to sneak these wires through here. Yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, it's out. Would you look at that? All right. And now to see if this switch is working. Good. Nothing. Oh yes, of course it is. And it goes up as well. That is a job well done. And now I can leave this be and continue with the other door. I think I'm gonna do that off camera just to save time. Beautiful. And that concludes rear power windows retrofit. Now I'm going to focus on the front doors and getting hi-fi speakers and power folding mirrors in. And then later I'm going to come back and do the door panels here because I need to do some work on them and make sure the speakers can fit inside. You know the drill by now. Remove the door panel, replace wiring harness. See? Yes, come on out. You bastard. Tiny wrench fits. That's the old garbage. Put new one in. You can go there. Yes. It's a brand new day, and now I'm gonna finish up the wiring in the door, run it through the car, and then install this thing, which is the device for the power folding mirrors. I believe this consists. Also for the comfort memory seats or something, I don't know, doesn't really matter. And then there are two wires from this connector that go to the fuse panel. I forgot which number, but two wires from there. And then two wires from that side need to come here as well. And another thing that I did was run wiring through the whole car for the HEFI system. And as you can see, it is a bit of a mess in the trunk. But that's because I still haven't finished the front left door. And then I'm gonna tidy all of this up. But basically all 10 speakers now from the car, from the front doors, rear doors, from the trunk need to come to the amp. And then there's, I think six wires from the amp that go to the front head unit over there. And now we need to run two wires from this connector. One goes to the fuse 57, and the other one goes to the K-Bus. Take apart the fuse panel again for the millionth time. The way this works is this one goes to the bottom 
57 fuse and then this one goes on top and it bites onto this prong or pin or whatever it is and that way they are connected on the same fuse the one is for the left side the other one for the right i am just so sick and tired of running wires putting them in tight spaces am i even heading in the right direction oh it clicked into place oh you beauty oh the satisfying click you might think that power folding mirrors are not worth the trouble but they're actually quite useful in europe in europe everything is small parking spaces especially when you go into a city and you park in one of those underground parking spots there's no space for anything and being able to fold mirrors on a press of a button makes all the difference trust me now I can assemble the fuse strip, hopefully for the last time. And now the K-Bus. Look at pliers, make sure it bites. Ow, everything hurts. I'm just I'm moaning a lot. It's starting to sound like a porn. Not a very good one. So that's the K-Bus terminals connected. Ooh, baby, come back. The things I do, the lens I go. F dropped it again. Oh my god, what, what happened? How? What? <sighs> How do I get out now without breaking my spine? <sighs> I can work in a circus. So let's put in the control unit. Okay, so all of the wiring is connected now, and I just wanna quickly try out if the power folding function is working. So here's the switch, the mirror, it is for the right side, but it doesn't matter, I think. So if I press the button, yes, sir. Oh, that is great. And now the last phase of retrofitting power folding mirrors. This is the one that I removed from my car. This is the one from the donor car that has power folding function. We need to transfer this high glass shadow line trim onto this one, and that's actually a lot harder than it looks and sounds. This here is not meant to be taken apart. The only way that I was able to take this apart is by cutting away this sleeve, use a Dremel, break it, cut it, and remove it, and then this piece can be separated from the mirror base. That's the only way that I was able to do it. This tiny spring in here is under a bit of tension, because it keeps the mirror in place and that way you can swing it back and forth. Once I cut that away, I'm going to use a hollow bolt, this one, because it's needed for the wiring, and a nut on the top, and just put the same amount of tension, I'm gonna measure it now as before, and then run wiring through it, and that's it. It takes a little bit of time and patience, but I was able to do it on the left side mirror, so I'm just gonna copy paste on this one. First, I'm going to remove this trim from the old mirror. Good. And now, because I don't care about this wire, I'm just going to cut it away. So now I need to start dremeling away. Let's hit it. Start breaking these. Just going to bend the tabs in. And you don't have to worry about this spring popping because there's not a lot of tension on it, like I said. Here's what I did. I made small cuts into the upper part of the sleeve and now I'm just bending the tabs in and then all this can slide on the bottom. There's the spring. Now this can be separated just like that. No longer need this. And there's the sleeve. And now it's just a matter of undoing three screws on the back and removing this trim piece. There it is. No longer need the base. And there's our lovely trim that we need. Put that on the side. And now we can focus on the power folding mirror and doing the same. But first I'm going to start by removing the wires from the connector. That's the connector removed. Don't mind the tractor out front. That is my neighbor attaching trailer to his diesel Land Rover. And now we can cut. The wires are safe now. 
Just gonna tape them in place. Now I can cut this off. This plastic thing, whatever it is, I thought it was some sort of limiter, but obviously it has to go because I'm gonna cut through it. And I didn't have it on the left side mirror. Didn't make any difference whatsoever, so don't care about that. I'm gonna measure the top spring here and basically put the same tension with the bolt and nut later. This is how it works, actually. This is what the spring does. It puts pressure onto this arm and then you can fold it like this. But when the power folding function is active, there are gears and motor inside that wind it and that's how it closes. That's removed, undamaged, unharmed. So now this goes back in like that. The spring goes there, the hollow bolt goes through the bottom and then the nut on the top. Simple but effective. The problem that I have here is that this bolt is unknown threat to humanity and I went to three different software stores and I couldn't find nut that fits correctly onto this. This is not the same thread as the bolt. So I'm gonna take this to the wise bench and then crank it down, cross thread it, which is, as we all know, poor man's thread locker. And it'll fit that way and it'll never come off. Cross threading in progress. Right, so that's nice and cross threaded. I'm still gonna use thread locker, because I have some. I'm not that poor. And that's exactly at seven mil, perfect. And this can still do this, which is important. This is how it looks. Now I can run my wires through the bolt and he has nice round surface, so it's not gonna cut wires on the bottom as well. I couldn't fit a washer here because then it would stick too much out and I wouldn't be able to put the cap here. Doesn't need it anyways, because this doesn't move that much. Actually it doesn't move at all because the gear inside does all the work. This base here doesn't move at all. So this is how it stands now. This is how it's going to be installed on the car and then it just flips over and this thing doesn't move at all. It just, the gears move the ring inside of this housing. Oh, by the way, this bolt is M12. And there you go. Nice and creative solution. Now I can put back the mirror and then tomorrow put all of this onto the car. It is a brand new day and the car is quite literally frozen. Now I'm gonna put back the mirror and see if it works. All right, all right, all right. Let's finagle this. Maybe I should have tested it first before I bolted on it. Eh, it's gonna work. Okay, it's connected. So, you watch, I'm gonna go press the button. Oh, uh, that's not good. Oh. Well, it works now. I don't know what was that before. Maybe self-adjusting or something? I don't know. It's open all the way. Yes, it is. Let's see if the adjustment works. It does. You can't see it, but it is working. Press the button. Yep. The right one is actually faster than the left one, but I guess that has something to do with length or whatever. Well, I don't know what that bang was first time I pressed the button, but it is working now. So we're just gonna pretend that didn't happen and say it's working good because it is. Nice. Another one. Very good. I wanted to show you my new toy, which is Ersa Independent 75 gas soldering set. And it is, as the title says, gas powered soldering iron. I got tired of dragging extension cords all over the yard and garage when I need to solder something. So I decided to give this one a world. It has good reviews and it's made in good old Ireland. I bet you didn't expect me to say that, but that's nice for a change. And it comes with all kinds of different extensions. This one is for shrinking tubes. These are for soldering wires and these are for whatever else. Now I'm gonna fill it up and give it a world. If this thing actually works good, it's going to save me a lot of time. So I'm kind of excited about it. Add flux. That's real nice.
Well, snap it, snap, it works. That's really good. Let's turn it off. This thing is awesome. Nice and strong joint. Now let's see if the shrink tube part works. Oh yeah, works a treat. I'm actually quite happy with this thing. So I just finished wiring for all 10 speakers in the car. They're all now coming back to the amplifier in the back. And now I just gotta make all of this pretty and assemble the rest of the trunk and all of the trim over there. And finally have a car that's in one piece, not a rolling project, because I've been driving like that for days now. That's all nicely done. And now I'm gonna put the rest of the trim back in. So the trunk area is officially done and converted to black. Used carpets, but in really nice shape that I thoroughly cleaned. The thing that you pull that covers the trunk area. I sourced all of that and it is looking lovely. Now we need to drill a hole in this door panel to accommodate this speaker. And I'm gonna use hole saw to do that. I already did this on the passenger side door panel. So just gonna repeat that here. It's not that complicated, but it is a bit time consuming because you have to go really slow in order not to damage the letter. Because if I damage the letter, that's it, game over. I'm never gonna find this door panel ever again. Luckily from the factory, they already marked where it needs to be cut out because that's how they did it from the factory. So I just gotta, you know, there is middle. Good. Now I gotta finish off with a blade because I gotta be careful not to destroy the letter. That would be bad. Nice. Behold the hole. All right. That's the hole. Now I need to try and stick a speaker through it. So far so good. Oh yeah. Right in. That's perfect. Huh? What do you say about that? And that is the door panel done. This of course has a lip, so it goes a bit over the edge of the hole. So it covers up and you can't see any cuts in the letter. The door panel is in and I didn't put everything back together because I want to hear how it sounds. Close the door, Bluetooth. I also installed one of those small Bluetooth devices that you can get on Amazon for like 30 euros. Plug it in the back of the radio, works like a charm. So that's in. probably can't hear it over the speakers or over the small microphone but it sounds a million times better than before because before it didn't have any bass at all and now it has a tiny bit of bass not tiny but like good enough and you can actually feel it and hear it so I'm really happy with this and to be honest I don't think I'm gonna be installing Harman Kardon anytime soon because this is just good enough for me I'm not that picky and I don't like to listen to music way too loud I just want it to be sharp crisp with a bass which this is, so perfect. Honestly, I'm very happy with this. Sounds great, it really does. Considering it was free because it came from the donor car, this is awesome. It took quite a lot of work because all of the wires had to go to the trunk and then a few wires from the trunk to here, but worth it. 
enough. I need to put all of this back together. Last thing I need to do is self-leveling for the headlights and Xenon system, but I'm gonna delay that as much as I can because it's quite cold outside and I don't feel like running wires through the car again and taking apart everything. And to be honest, I don't really need it right now because the manual adjustment is working perfect and I was able to aim the headlights and projectors perfectly. So they're working quite a treat at night, but probably when the weather is a bit warmer, I'm gonna install all of that crap as well. But for now, that's it. Mm -hmm.